I know we're talking about prioritizing protein. Right. And I was just mentioning to everybody, especially in the keto space, I think everybody in the early days concentrates so hard on fat and car, not, uh, not eating the carbs, that they actually neg neglect and forget about protein. Right. So, you know, why are proteins so important, Dustin? Well, why is huge. Um, muscle preservation, one of the biggest things, but you look at it, there's a few, um, few components to the human body that are really important. Uh, minerals are really important. Proteins are really important. The proteins are like the building blocks of the human body. So, and it's more than just, I eat protein. It's like, you need a variety. You need to have the right essential amino acids. Uh, you need to get the non-essential amino acids through your food. Um, and, and, and so this is really, really important. Um, but like you said, is like a lot of times people are trying to hit all their numbers and they realize they miss that one. And I tell people protein should be a constant. The original ketogenic diet was developed for kids with epilepsy back in the early 1900s. And one of the biggest challenges they had is because they had to have their ketone levels so high is that their protein levels sometimes had to go really low. So a lot of people fear eating too much protein. And for the majority of you out there, I'm talking about 99.9% .9 of you out there, uh, we want to bring you on the higher side of the low protein, uh, lower in your protein. Um, I'm not usually that worried about um, the amount of protein people eat. So, um, but I, I'm more concerned people not eating enough because of the long-term loss of muscle mass, the health benefits of what protein can provide. And of course, high quality sources of protein. So super, super important. I do have kind of a range of what I recommend for people if they want a ballpark to get started. Yeah. So, you know, one I, I often get is, but what about Atkins, man? Like Atkins was a high protein diet and that seemed right. to work and it didn't seem to work. And, and did you know he died yeah. young and all that <laughs> sort of stuff? Can you talk to Mr. Yeah. Atkins about no, it? Honestly, Dr. Atkins was way ahead of his time. Um, he had to fight, if you think about it, his situation, he had to fight a pretty big battle. We were in the low fat crave back then. So here you have low carb, but low fat at the same time makes it really hard and unsustainable. And that's what makes the, a modified ketogenic diet or a, a, a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet that's moderate fat more sustainable because it's more satiating, it's more satisfying. Um, also, yes, you can overeat protein and reduce your ability to, to get into ketosis, but it's, it's, I'm more concerned with people nowadays not eating enough protein. And that's, and especially as we get older. Um, and Dr. Atkins, just so you know, um, from what I understood, he actually got a head a fall and a head injury that led to his death. Nothing to do with any other metabolic issues. So just to clear the air. Um, and but but yeah, the, the idea is, is that, you know, we're suggesting most people do like either two meals, three meals a day. Three meals usually is all people really need, but two meals or even one meal for some people. So they're eating high quality protein in those meals, but they're also they're using fat as the as the other component. You don't need if you're a 100, 150 pound woman, you don't need 150 grams of protein as that female if you're not a high level athlete. Even even then you might not need that much. And I think that's what happened with Atkins is people were just mass consuming protein and they weren't necessarily choosing the right qualities of protein because they're eating so much, the way to keep it cheaper is the crappy types of protein. And I don't think that was ideal either. So um, for us today, we're educated now and we wanna understand this better is high quality protein, but make sure you eat an appropriate amount for yourself, which is not, there's no perfect science right now to tell you that you have to find it, but I can give you a good ranges to figure that out. Yeah. And I've heard you mention it several times and, and I know all about it, but you keep mentioning this high quality protein. Can you talk to us more about like, what do you mean by high quality program? Like protein, what's a, what's a low quality protein versus right. a high quality protein? So, um, and I'm not going to get into this too deep, but I'll give you a little bit of an understanding is that, some of the meat industry has gotten some bad raps uh, over the last 20 years, and, and rightly so. Um, but the problem is it gave meat a bad rap, and that's not the way it should have been. It should have been the industry or those, com those companies, not necessarily the product itself. So high-quality proteins, the more, more free-range, grass-fed, wild-type proteins is the highest quality you can get. And ironically, they tend to be less in fat in them because that animal tends to be more moving and tends to be consuming a diet that doesn't necessarily fatten them up, right? Now, granted, a good old steak, if I'm having a birthday steak, I want a nice good marbling in it. I want a little bit of corn fed in there. I mean, hey, listen, 
I, I want to enjoy that. Now I've learned to enjoy a, a more wild meat, but at first it might be a little transition. So that's the optimal protein, wild fish, right? Or, you know, find sources that are less contaminated if, if, you're, if you're really concerned about that. So the, the, more, the more fresh or wild is the is step one. Step two is like, like right now, let's say you're using beef or even chicken. Um, you want to find ones that are, are more out. Like, so you might have a grass fed cow finished with corn. Right. Well, that's higher quality than a, only a corn fed cow. Right. Or only a grain fed cow um, or that isn't isn't able to get out of the pen and be wild or be out and wander a little bit. So that's kind of the pecking order. There are some meats out there that are um, that are made steaks that are made. Uh, I don't consider that high quality uh, mean like like beyond meat. Um, now, hey, if that you're vegan and that's all you have, then hey, that's all you have but I don't consider that a high quality replacement for a good old piece of wild game or wild meat or even a good old steak. Now let's get to the processed stuff. I'm not a big fan of processed meats. Now, hey, I saw your bacon. Uh, oops, my wife's calling me. Get, get rid of her, let's get rid of her. Uh, she'll call me again probably, but I'm not a big fan of like, like people go, well, I can eat as much bacon as I want on the ketogenic diet or a low carb diet. Well, the reality is I can get you to change your life with bacon, but it's probably not a good long-term healthy product to have a mass, consum a mass consum consumption. I have bacon once or twice a week, but I re recommend like salamis and bacon in, in, your, in your deli meats and all that stuff. I recommend moderate that. That should only be about 20% of your protein content uh, per day should come from that. Uh, cheeses and dairy should still be about 20%. The majority of your protein should come from from high quality protein sources that are not processed. Dairy, you, you know, depends if you're tolerant or not. If you're tolerant to dairy, you can maybe go a little higher with dairy, um, people that need that. Um, but that's kind of my ballpark. I hope that wasn't too complicated for people, but protein is so important for us. And, and more important as you get older, because you don't break down as well, you don't digest as well, and you need more, because that's what's gonna protect your muscle mass as you get older. Yeah, and we've talked about this already, like the, the importance of muscle mass as you age. Right. So I'm really great, grateful that you keep, you know, mentioning that because now I'm getting a little older. I've got to be really concerned about yep. that. But, hey, yep. so, you know, like we're talking about building blocks of the body, right? We're not just talking about muscle. We're talking about hair, nails, right. you know, all keeping joints yeah. safe, all that sort of stuff. What is like a, a general rule of thumb for people watching on the amounts of proteins that they should be ingesting, eating themselves? Yeah, so I, I just how I break it down. I mean, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm, I'm, there, it's going to be variable because I've worked with top level athletes with my mom at 72, right? What I tell people is most women should be somewhere between 50 and 100 grams of protein a day. So if you think about it this way, that's, that's most women. So I would say at minimum, a, a woman should have two decks of cards of protein a day. If you take a deck of cards, make it into a, any, any kind of protein source. Yes, some are going to have be more fatty or some are going to be more lean. Chicken thigh and chicken breast is going to be slightly different, but it's still pretty close. So a a, 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 at least two decks of cards of animal protein, ideally. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, then you need to find alternative sources, and you're looking at that 50 to 100 grams. Um, now, if you're a high-level athlete, female athlete, then I might push them over, over 100 grams a day for, for training purposes and different purposes. As a man, the lowest I've ever seen a man, I've ever put a man on a, on a protein diet is 120 grams a day. So 120 grams up to, you know, I've had men go as high as 300 grams, but I see between 120 and 100 and uh, between 120 and 200 grams of protein for a man per day. Um, now, if you're into fitness and you're into working out and training, that's going to be a variable. But now if you're, if you're big into fasting, which I am, um, when fasting on your fasting days, cause I do different fasting days, I don't over worry about getting enough protein in those days. I do get some in some ways, but as a whole, these are your normal days. This is the 80% of the time you want to be in those ballparks. Um, so that's like a good rule of thumb to get started started for most people. And um, yeah, the higher the quality, the better. Yeah. And you know, the, the thing I always coach with, uh, we talked about intermittent fasting there, and we haven't really talked no. about that much yet. But like, yeah. you know, the cool thing I like about intermittent fasting is, is the actual feasting that comes with that as well, right? Like, I'm a big proponent of like, oh, don't focus on what you're taking away, focus on what you actually can have and be grateful for that. So when it comes to breaking that fast, it's like, hallelujah, look at this glorious meal I have in front of me. Let's get down and chow down and enjoy that bad boy. So, uh, so many cool things that we keep coming up with. I think we might be able to do like more of this further on yeah. down the line as well. You, just, you actually 
made me think of something there and, and I'll just touch on it for a second. Uh, the, the power of our mind, like that's what you're doing is, is you use, you took a situation and made it into a really cool positive. It's kind of like if you're hunting in the wild and you shoot an animal that and you're starving, like that food is going to have a different impact on our body than if you just went to the store and picked up quick or went to McDonald's and picked up quick. So looking forward to something and having excitement about it actually changes your biochemistry. It actually has an impact on your glucose and has an impact on your, how your body responds, which does matter. And so I think that's something we could talk about in the future down the road, because if we're going to get people metabolically healthy and get them in a good place, we got to look at the whole picture package. And when people think it's about food and exercise and it's just, it's 70% mental, it's 70% 70 mind, mind, mindset, 20% nutrition, and then 10% more physical activity. Um, and I could add more to that. We could add another 25% for your environment, but now we're at 125%. <laughs> no, and it's cool that you mentioned that mindset because guys, it looks like the consensus is in. We're going to go with a 10-day challenge, not a five-day challenge. Everyone's excited with a 10-day a challenge. And when we talk about that challenge, guys, we're not just talking about like, how do I eat and what do I eat? We're also talking about mindset, accountability, hydration, good quality meals. Uh, what else have I forgotten there, Dustin? Uh, movement. Movement, of movement. course, movement. movement as well. So uh, we will have some coming details about that uh, and we will share more on when we're going to roll that out, how we're going to roll it out. But we're super excited. And then the last one, which was crazy yesterday, I think we had... 30 people sign up for the free uh, essential keto slash low carb cookbook yesterday. So I'll drop those links down in here. Hope you guys have a fabulous day. I'm always going to do what I do. Closing words from the man, the myth, the legend. Commit. Commit to your journey. Um, prioritize protein if you want to stay long term healthy. And just remember that getting low carb is a process and a journey that for you to be able to maintain a new life. So you're creating a new life for yourself. And hopefully you're being the demonstration for the people you care the most about. And that's the most important part. Here we go. Love it. Adios, my friends. Cheers. We'll see you same bat time, same bat channel.